Good evening and welcome back to the Sunday evening service. Guess what? God is still in control. Yes, sir. And he will always be in control. So tonight we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, sing one verse of number 477. We're going to put our happy faces on and praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful and thankful for this great day you've given to us, the opportunity to serve and to worship you through music and through your word. And I just pray tonight that you will be with those who are having to work in this extreme heat that we are in, that you be with them and keep them safe, be with our folks, uh, some that have animals that they raise and the tanks are drying up and the food. Just pray that you would meet and provide for those needs. And Father, I just pray tonight as we study your word that you would help us uh, to be the church and to go out and to serve you and to be what you've called us to be. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, number 477, we're going to sing the first verse. Need everybody to stand, because you stay a little better when you stand. Amen. Jesus, my Lord, will love me for... I'm sorry, I forgot to take it down. And Jesus, and my Lord. No, that would keep... Uh, I was singing that while we were... <laughs> Recently, I've been patching sheetrock to prep for paint 
troubleshooting electrical and completing remaining tasks required by inspectors. In addition, we've been helping to coordinate the other subcontractors and volunteers. We plan to leave for our next project on August 10th. On the family front, we celebrated some important milestones. Our oldest graduated from Pensacola Christian College in May with a bachelor's degree in accounting. In June, he got married to a lovely young lady he met in college, Brittany Hunter. We are thrilled to have her as a part of our family. They are living, working, and going to church near Lilburn, Georgia. David is still working towards his private pilot's license and has passed the FFA written exam. See, he's, always, he's also busy with schoolwork and helping us in the building ministry. He plans to finish high school in 2024 and hopes to start an internship at Aero Missions in the summer before starting college. The rest of the children are busy with year-round school, camp, church, and CAP activities. Leanne is still serving hundreds of international Baptist missionary women online on a, on a team as an RN consultant. There is still no shortage of work. We are booked up for a long while, starting with jobs in New York State, Texas, Botswana, and a return trip to Southland to assist with a large project on the campsite. We could also use more laborers to join us. Thank you for your support and prayers, and let us know how we can pray for you. In Christ, C.J. White and his family. And it has a couple of praises here. It says, Brittany and Isaac's graduation and wedding, a lot of work accomplished at HBC, provision, of a replacement laptop, suit and work clothes for CJ, a tablet for David, replacement tire for the truck and van, AC repair, safety, and wrist healed. Those are the praises. A couple of their prayer requests are safety, traveling, and working, spiritually strong family, boldness and witness, and unspoken upcoming needs. And those sound like prayer requests that are just always going to be there. Yeah. Um, you know, so just keep them in, in, your, in your prayers, um, and that's from the White Man. Amen. I've talked to Brother CJ this week, and David went to a BIMI mission kind of camp, uh, praying and looking toward the direction of getting his pilot's license and doing a mission work where they fly things in for missionaries and what have you. So pray for him that that would do well. Isaac's new wife starts teaching next week at the Christian school there in Georgia, and then Isaac's working kind of at home right now with his new job, and so God is blessing them folk as well. And so. Amen. Uh, we're delighted, Brother CJ, of course, him and his ministry framed most of our building, worked on our building next door, and done a lot of other different things. And so they're a blessing to our family for home missions, and God is keeping them busy. So, Amen. Brother Tim, if you will come, we'll receive our offering for this evening. I'll even ask if you would to bless it. Yes, sir. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come into your house to hear your word. Pray that you would be with this uh, offering, Lord, and pray that we would use it the way that you want us to. Pray that you would just be for those who can give and bless those who cannot. We just uh, praise you and, and love you in all that we do and say. Else we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
You can't go to heaven unless you're saved. And as we learned this morning, we are the dwelling place of God. We are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit of God lives inside of us. And so no matter where we go, we take God with us. You go to the ice cream store on Sunday afternoon, you take God Amen. with you. You go home to your recliner to relax in the afternoon, you take God with yes, you. Sir. And so we need to understand that. But since salvation uh, requires that we repent and get saved, and, and we get out of self and step into giving control to God, uh, we need to understand that we need to re relieve ourselves of our own personal things. Yes, sir. Uh, we need to volunteer our lordship to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if he's not Lord of all, he's not, he's not Lord at all. And so we're going to look tonight at the fact that we belong to God, but we're going to look at surrender. Everybody's favorite word, surrender. Uh, how do we surrender? I'm glad you asked that, Pastor. Uh, because what does a surrendered life look like? Now, when Jesus came, he surrendered to the will of the Father. He came to do the will of the Father. And so if you notice in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. And so to receive salvation, we had to lay down ourselves and take up Christ. And we did that through being saved. And now, as Christians, we should follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and obviously, if we're the temple, uh, we ought to be like Christ. So to follow him indicates activity. W-O-R-K work. Amen? Uh, and, and here's the thing. Uh, he is actively leading you and me his way. Remember that little arrow that said he's the way that used to have the way? Uh, he has a mission for us. And so he's leading us in the mission that he has for us, the purpose that he has for our life. We are to give him the glory. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all to the glory of God. So we ought to be giving him the glory and we ought to be cooperating with him. Yeah. And that word cooperate can be shortened down to obey. We ought to be obeying him. Amen. So if I'm saved, it means that I have to surrender. The word surrender means that I'm going to surrender my life. I'm going to surrender my will. I'm going to surrender my ways. Because he said our ways are not his ways. Right. Amen. And so uh, when we enlist, and I, I use this because Brother Tim was in the Army, but when one enlists in the armed forces, the same commitment of submission is made by every person. And I'm going to hopefully go out on the limb and get this right again. I, Tim, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the regulations of the, of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God. Amen. And so when you took that oath, you became a soldier, and, and you agreed to that. That was a commitment to be submissive to the authorities that were over you. And so they became your new mommy and daddy, so to speak. Amen? And you did that for a set time, two years, four years, 30 years, 20 years, however long you're in there, right? So how much more serious should you and I be when we make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. when we commit to him, uh, to our God? Yeah. I mean, if we're willing to, to give all for uh, man, uh, we ought to do that for God. And there's some similarities in there. Support and defend. We ought to support and defend our God, should we not? Yep. Uh, we ought to bear truth and true faith and allegiance to God, right. should we not? Uh, I keep throwing that four-letter word out, obey. But we ought to obey God. Mm. Not because of any other reason, but the fact that God commanded that we obey Him and that we love Him. Is that yeah. not true? Right. So what does it mean to surrender? Now, surrender means to cease resistance, to submit to authority, to yield, or give oneself up. And so when we get saved, we submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. We give up ourselves. We, we uh, cease to 
resist him, and now we are to obey him and submit to his authority. So number one in those surrender is that we need to trust completely. Now I know Brother Tim from his testimony when he was teaching Sunday school and stuff, that when he went to the army, he trusted completely in his leadership. Uh, you have to. Yeah. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Everybody here knows the verses. Trust in the Lord. Doesn't say your baptism or right. your wife or your husband or your children. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths, plural. Yeah. Yeah. All of our paths. But we have to trust in the Lord. We have to put our trust in him. So what does it mean to trust? Glad you asked that, Pastor. The Hebrew word means believe in a person to the point of reliance. When Tim joined the army, he was relying on those men above him. Yep. And, and it was total reliance on them. You and I, to trust in the Lord means that we have faith in him. Yep. We put our faith in him. We put or place all of our trust in him. So that means we don't rely on ourselves. We don't put trust in our thoughts and our desires and our decisions. We put it all in the Lord. Based upon the soldier's manual. Amen. You had a manual, didn't you? Amen. And so we have a manual that God has given to us as we're soldiers. And we are to trust in Him with all our heart. I mean, that is with everything that we have. Uh, I have to ask myself, how much do I really trust or rely on God? Okay, you ask yourself that, really, right now. Okay, now you've asked yourself that. Now, do I ever think about my every breath and heartbeat? No. Do we, do we really take time to think about every breath that we take and every heartbeat going through the day? No, we get busy and everything else. But do you realize that we're trusting in God to breathe and for our hearts to beat every day? Something that probably most of us take advantage of? Do I turn to Him only? When I find myself unable to do a task, what do we do today? Well, I don't know how to figure it. Google, how do you? Mm -hmm. And we look at Google to try and get the answer. So when we're in a mess, somebody must look at Google a lot. <laughs> when we're in a mess, who should we turn to? Yeah. Trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on... Google's understanding. Right. And so, do I turn to him? Or, or, or do we, in this flesh, in our nature, of our, our old nature, do we say, no, I can handle that until we get in trouble, and then we turn to God? Is that not true? Yeah. Or do we just turn to God when we fail miserably? Well, I've done everything I can. God, are you up there? What can you do? When we fail miserably, or when I'm sick. You know, when I'm healthy and breathing, the heart's going good, everything's great. Don't even think about the fact that that's because of God. But then when I get sick, Lord, and we call on the Lord, do we not? It's tough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. do, do, Tim, do we rely on him to be the husbands that he's called us to be? Or we just try to step out there and do it on our own? I mean, he's given us in the manual... He's yeah. given us instructions. Yeah. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Yeah. You wives. Well, about submitting to your husbands. Well, you don't love me like Christ loved the church. Do we rely on him and go to him for help to overcome our habitual sins, the things that we deal with every day that we just can't seem to conquer? Do we take those to him? Do we trust in him to help us with those? But how about him? Do we trust in him to be who he says we are? He says that we're more than conquerors. Do you believe that? He says if we resist the devil, he'll flee from us. Right. And so the piano agrees, amen. Wow. And so do we trust in him? Listen, when I attempt stuff in my own strength, and I have done that, and in my own wisdom, and I have done that, or when I go out and give it my best shot, I'm not relying on God. I'm leaning on my what? Your own, own understanding. Yeah. Trying to do it my own way. I've got the manual. Brother Tim, if, if you went into the army and you cleaned your gun the way you thought you needed to clean it instead of the way the manual said to do it, you'd be in trouble, would you not? 
wouldn't get clean, wouldn't be up to par. Right. And, and that's the way we are. When we lean on our own understanding, we're not up to par. We're not trusting in God. That's right. We're saying, God, I, I know you said that I should trust you. I know I shouldn't lean, but God, you can't handle this one. And so we do it on our own. And, and hey, when I do that, I'm not trusting the Lord with all my heart, am right. I? And so anytime we come across uh, this word in Scripture, uh, it's referring to that inner self of us, our heart. Remember we studied the other Wednesday night, you guys may have been gone, but we studied on Wednesday night that our heart is that inner us. It's not that organ that pumps blood. It's that inner us, that yeah. conscience, that will. And so... That inner us dictates our character and it dictates our, our behavior. So when your kids are acting up, it's that inner self. But here's the thing. To trust him is not, N-O-T, capital N-O-T, not to lean on my own understanding. Because I have no clue. It literally means that I am relying upon my insight, my sinful nature, my experiences, my discernment. Hey, most of that don't line up with God's Word. If I rely on my understanding, I'm not relying on Him. I'm not relying on His wisdom. Therefore, I am not trusting in Him. Therefore, I'm not doing what the Bible says, trusting in the Lord. I'm doing my own thing. And so, in all my conduct, in all my directions, I am to observe Him and the manual. The book that tells me how to do it. There is not one area in my life that should not fall under God's authority. I should surrender my all to Him. When I do follow Him, He'll guide me. He said that I would not leave you comfortless. I will send the Comforter and He shall guide you into all truth. And so we have the Holy Spirit of God living in this temple that is there to guide us into all truth, into the truth of the manual, and for us to lean on, because He is God, amen? And so we need to do that. And if you notice, it reflects our character, because verse 19 and 20, as we read a minute ago, says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, He gave it to you, amen? And you're not your own. And so, for you have bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and spirit, which are God's. And so, we need to trust Him completely, totally, 100%. Secondly, we need to love entirely. Now, that gets a little tough. Deuteronomy 6, 5. You all know this verse. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, all thy soul, and with all thy strength. That's a lot of love, amen? We, we, we trust the Lord with everything. We trust Him with our love. We trust Him with, with everything. Our spouses, everything that we have. We love Him with everything that we are. That's what it tells us we need to do. So how do we know if we love God this way? I'm glad you asked. It's a lot of asking. That. Now we can say it, or Tim can say, I love God. Now I'm supposed to believe Him, amen? He says He loves Jennifer. How do, you, how do we know you love Jennifer? You can't get away from her side. You can't stop holding her hand. You can't stop looking at her. And goo -goo 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 -goo. How, what are you doing? You're showing that love that you love him, her. Amen? And so we can chat it. We can say it. Uh, we can talk about it. We can throw those words out there. Uh, we can even chant it. I love God. I love God. We can repeat it over. I love God. I love God. I love God. I love God. We can sing it. Oh, how I love Jesus. We can do all of that, can we not? Yeah. But how do we know? Lots of people give lip service. Lots of folks say, I love God. Yeah. Some. So John 14, 21. He that hath my commandments and keep them. He that hath my commandments. Back to the manual book, amen. He that hath my commandments and keep them. You know what another word for keep them is? Okay. He that hath my commandments and keep them. He it is that loveth me. So if you're not obeying him, what does that mean? It means we don't love him. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. 
I mean, God doesn't make it very hard. And so our love for him is measured by our obedience to him. Our love for our spouses is measured by what we do for them, how we treat them and all that. Not relying on self, not relying or leaning on my own understanding about loving God, not rationalizing, well, I was at church this morning and tonight, I love God. Those that aren't there tonight, they must not love God. Because God said not to forsake, you know. You know, we rationalize all that stuff, so we must be better than them, huh? If we love him, we will obey him, we will follow him, we will keep his commandments. Now, you notice back in the verse there, it says, with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength. And so we've already discussed that with all my heart is talking about that conscience, that will, that, that character in us. The soul is the emotional and passions of our behavior. I mean, uh, to be motivated in following him. Um, to love him with all our heart and all our soul. To have a goal of being transformed into his likeness. Uh, that's, that's, that's the ultimate goal. Then, to behave accordingly. And to behave accordingly means that we obey him with all of our heart, with all of our being, with all that was in us. And then our might or our strength refers to our, our effort of living that intentionally. In other words, we work hard with all our strength to intentionally love him and obey him and serve him. And when we do that, it shows that we love him. Uh, so with what we've discussed so far, uh, to what degree are you surrendered? Are you surrendered with all your heart, with all your being, with all your conscience, with all your will? Are you surrendered with all your strength, your soul and your strength? I mean, are you aligned with God? Do you align up with the manual? Do you obey it? Do you live it? Do you, do you hide it? Do you take it in? Do you do all that? Are you gathering knowledge to be transformed? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable on God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? How did you get all the, the, the stuff about the army in your mind? You put it all up in there, did you not? And so uh, we have to, we have to, it, it takes work. Now, if all of us here love the Lord, Trusted in the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. Imagine the transformation that take place in our church. If all of us here, all of you over here, and all of you over here, if we who are the church live like the church and became the church and shine like the church and, and, and realize that we belong to God and obey like he commanded, imagine what God could do to the church and for the church. And, and so... Uh, when we are convicted by a token effort, when, when, when you hear the message and it convicts you and, and you put that love in place and you begin to follow Jesus and you surrender to him, not my will but thy will be done with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength, then God can accomplish much in and through you and in and through the church because we are the church, amen? Which leads us to the third thing, and that is, is that we need to be filled absolutely. You running on empty tonight? Turn over to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 18, you know the verse. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Being filled with the Spirit. Now, when, when you're filled with alcohol, your body does crazy things. It takes... Not much alcohol to make you drunk. And when you get drunk, you're out of control. Being filled with the Spirit means that you are giving your control 
of you to the Holy Spirit. In other words, the more alcohol you take in, the more control alcohol has of your body. The more spirit you take in and give control of the spirit, the more the spirit has control of you and your body. So when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, surrendering will increase. Surrendering control to who? To the Holy Spirit will increase. And you're being filled, you're, you're giving your surrender. Listen, the fruit of the vine, alcohol, will move us away from God. The fruit of the Spirit will pull us closer to God. And so we need to allow Him to have control. He needs to have control of your tongue. He needs to have control of your mind. He needs to have control of your eyes, everything. Because you are the church. Amen? And so when the Spirit gains more control, there is a difference in your behavior. There is a difference in your desires. There is a difference in your passion. And all of a sudden, you are the church that you're supposed to be. Because you're being led by the Spirit that lives in your temple. And so it not only affects our lifestyle, but it it, 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 it affects our relationship. Look at verse number 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's what we ought to be doing. And if we're filled by the Spirit's control and He's controlling the temple, then we're going to sing and make a joyful noise and be full of the Spirit and full of, of uh, making melody in our heart to the Lord. Amen? And so it affects... Uh, Listen, we'll greet one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs instead of other things that are not important because we are the church. This means that we will seek to encourage others because we are the church and, and to build up other people. Verse number 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another and we'll become what God wants us to be. And so, because we have moved beyond simply knowing about the power of the Holy Spirit, now we are living in the power of the Holy Spirit. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So we've got that power. Jesus gave us a perfect example of that when he went to the garden that night. Matthew 14, 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. Amen. And that's where we need to get to be. We need to get to be to where, yeah, Lord, I, I want this, I want that, please let love, but not my will, but thy will be done. And when we get to that point, then we are trusting in the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, and all of our strength. And so, if you're a Christian, uh, <laughs> you have professed with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you've professed that you're saved, if you're going to put him first, you can profess that Jesus is Lord when he has total control. Then, if you're that way, it's time to get out of the way and let the Lord have control. It's time to step aside and lean on him and let him come into your life. Let him fill you up. Let him take total control. That's where we need to be uh, of our entire life. And so, uh, if you're saved, that's where we ought to be tonight. Amen? Amen. So, trust him completely. Don't lean on your own understanding. Love him entirely. We're, we're to love not the world, neither the things of the world, but we are to love him and then be filled. The Holy Spirit is there. Give him all control. Give him all power. Surrender unto him. And then when you do that, just like when Jesus prayed to the Father, not my will but thine be done, then he'll give you power to be what he wants you to be. Amen? Let's pray. Our Father, we're thankful for your word tonight. We're thankful that we are your church. We're thankful that uh, your Holy Spirit lives and dwells inside of us. And tonight, Father, I pray that we know that we were purchased with a price. We know that we belong to you. We know that we have no authority in our life whatsoever. But many times we try to take that authority from you. So tonight I pray that you will help us to confess that if we have done it. And then to trust in you, Lord, 100%, not to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways to acknowledge you so that you can direct our paths 
so that we will go in the right direction and be what you'd have us to be. And we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Wednesday night we'll continue our study in Psalms 119.